متحدثنا التالي على المنصة السيد بول والكر قائد هيئة إطفاء كورن وول انضم السيد بول إلى هيئة إطفاء وإنقاذ كورن وول عام 2009 كنائب لقائد هيئة الإطفاء ثم أصبح قائد هيئة الإطفاء عام 2015 جاء تعين في هذا المنصب بعد 20 عاما وهيئة إطفاء لندن وهيئة ديفون عمل أيضا في وزارة الجاليات والحكومة المحلية كقائد فريق التقييم الميداني منح بول وسام الملك الخاص بعامل بهيئة الإطفاء عام 2018 كما أنهى سابقا برنامج القيادات التنفيذية لهيئة الإطفاء والإنقاذ البريطانية حصل على درجة الماجستير في مجال الريادة في الخدمة العامة من جامعة ووريك كما أنه حاصل على زمالة جمعية مهندسي الإطفاء يترأس بول لجنة التنسيق الدولي لمجلس كبار ضباط الإطفاء كما أنه ممثل المملكة المتحدة في اتحاد جمعيات ضباط الإطفاء في الاتحاد الأوروبي إضافة إلى كونه مشاركا فعالا في برنامج الاتحاد الأوروبي لتبادل الخبرات يتفضل السيد بول والكر إلى المنصة ليحدثنا عن التحقيق في حادث برج غرينفيلد. مستر بول make your way to the stage Good morning and uh, may I first uh, thank His Excellency Major General Expert Rashid Thani Al Matrusi on behalf of the UK National Fire Chiefs Council and personally for the very kind invitation to be here and speak to you today. Um, as you heard from the introduction, my name's Paul Walker. Uh, I'm hoping you don't think Paul Walker of Fast and Furious Brian O'Connor fame. Uh, I am the Chief Fire Officer of Cornwall and I can see many of you thinking, where is Cornwall? Um, Cornwall, as you can see from the map of the UK over on your right hand side of the screen, is in the very southwest peninsula of the UK and I'm fortunate to have the most southerly and the most westerly community fire stations in the UK. As I was coming over to Dubai for my first visit to your wonderful country, I was thinking, is there anything in common with Cornwall? And I found two things. Firstly, we remember our great past, our glorious present and our promising future. And we both salute and celebrate our rich coastal and maritime heritage, with Cornwall having over 462 kilometers of coastline. In Cornwall, like Dubai, we don't wait for things to happen, we make them happen. And clearly we have lots to learn from our colleagues and friends in the Dubai Civil Defense. Just for your information, Cornwall has a land area of 3,763 square kilometers, a population of 560,000 people. We have 5 million visitors a year, and I operate from 31 community fire stations and have 800 colleagues in my fire and rescue service. The images on the left of the screen show type of operational incidents within our average 5 to 6,999 calls each year. They include water rescue, moorland fire, fires, hotel and building fires, and of course, severe weather with snow and flooding. As a Chief Fire Officer in the UK, I'm privileged to sit on the National Fire Chiefs Council. Um, our President Roy Wiltshire sends his best wishes to colleagues in Dubai Civil Defence and across the UAE. The National Fire Chiefs Council comprises of the President Chair and two Vice Chairs, uh, Phil Loach from West Midlands and Hugh Jakeway from South Wales. And then we have eight committee leads, which are listed there. And as you can see, I am very proud to be the international lead, which created the connections with the Dubai Civil Defense. So on the 14th of June, 2017, there was a tragic fire at Grenfell Tower Block in West Kensington, London, a 24-story building comprising of 120 flats. Built in 1974, the building was 43 years old. 40 fire engines and over 250 firefighters 
tackled the incident, which was described by Roy Wiltshire as, this is one of the most serious and most horrific fires I have seen in recent years, and by our Prime Minister Theresa May, unimaginable tragedies our country has seen for many years. And of course, Grenfell Tower with 72 fatalities was the trigger for a significant amount of work. So what was the NFCC response? Well, in June 17, the National Fire Chiefs Council Chair was appointed to the Independent Expert Advisory Panel, and he attended all of the Cabinet Office briefing rooms sessions with the Prime Minister and our Fire Minister, Nick Hurd, MP. In August 2017, the NFCC submission to the Grenfell Tower inquiry, which opened in September 2017. Then in October 2017, uh, well, it started in September, the independent review of building regulations led by Dame Judith Hackett, who I knew met uh, Dubai civil defense leaders in London. Um, the NFCC made a submission to that. And of course, we led a coordinated approach from all of the UK fire and rescue services with over 100 reports with regard to uh, checks on all ACM cladded high-rise building. We've also provided updates on progress of joint competent authority and all NFCC position statements, letters are publicly available on the NFCC website, which is www.nationalfirechiefs.org.uk. So I thought it would be useful to add some context. Uh, and the, the figures and graphs that you see uh, on the screen are from the UK Home Office Statistical Bulletin 1217 uh, in June. And the figures refer to fires between April 2009 and March 2017. I think what's interesting to note is in 2016-17, 2 percent of the 30,296 dwelling fires in high-rise purpose-built flats of plus 10 fours. Prior to Grenfell, there was a downward trend of both fires and fatalities, with around 700 fires per year across England. And I think what we know from Grenfell is when the likelihood may be low, the impact can be severe. So in March this year, the NFCC wrote to the Minister for Housing, uh, Communities and Local Government, highlighting, highlighting some of the key areas of building regulations approved document B that require fundamental review and or improvements. Changes to ACM claddings are not quick enough. As we approach the two-year anniversary in six weeks of the Grenfell fire, the NFCC have joined part of a joint inspection team with housing enforcement officers, which we use leverage to get reluctant owners to, to change the cladding on their buildings. We've also started carrying out joint inspections with the health and safety executive on buildings undergoing refurbishment, where we believe there's an increased fire risk, which clearly we all saw from the, from the recent fire in Notre Dame in Paris. In terms of stay put advice, the NFCC position statement is available on the website, but whilst the principle is good for compartmentation, we must realize that fires are dynamic situations and do an analytical risk assessment that suggests when compartmentation is likely to or is breached, we should do an evacuation. Glass reinforced polyester GRP doors have failed the 30 minute fire resistance test after 15 minutes. And it's one item that the NFCC have helped the expert panel provide guidance on a range of building safety issues. Smoke control systems, primarily to protect the staircase enclosure. But the expert panel says they must designed, installed, maintained smoke control systems are essential to manage fire risk in high rise building. And local fire and rescue services should be informed if they are not working properly. Points five, six and seven on the slide 
refer to prohibiting or restricted value engineering of life safety systems. Management of life safety systems should be professional and controlled for the whole life of building. If we remember, Grenfell Tower was 43 years old. We all wonder how will buildings of today function in 2062? We need life of building care. The peer review bullet point refers to best practice in design, operation and maintenance should be shared. And I can see we in the UK NFCC can learn much from our colleagues and friends here in Dubai Civil Defence, especially as you excel and lead in smart city technologies and engineered life safety systems. But remember, please, our experience suggests that failure is not unprecedented and should be planned for in evacuation procedures, in resident engagement and firefighter training. Grenfell Tower was brand new in 1974 and I believe that we need a holistic whole of life approach to fire safety, particularly in high rise buildings. So where are we now? Well, there's been a huge amount of work by the UK National Fire Chiefs Council and we recently secured some Ministry of Housing and Communities Local Government funding to create um, a building safety team. Um, that building safety team was recently formed and is, excuse me, has recently formed and is really there as a resource for us because we realise the extent of work when all officers have their day job to do in their respective fire and rescue services across the UK. Uh, the areas that they're going to work on are automatic water suppression systems, the use of buildings, what about access for firefighting, we're looking at upper height restrictions, water for firefighting, and particularly care about the use of building, particularly where vulnerable people are residents, including residential care with our aging populations. These resources are aimed to support improvement and we firmly believe there's, a, there's an argument about perfect v better and we should be looking for a better solution. Looking forward, in December 2018, the UK government published a response to Dame Judith Hackett's review of building regs. This agrees with the majority, if not all, of the recommendation, and it sets out the government intentions to implement changes in the building sector. The immediate response was a ban of ACM cladding of buildings greater than 18 metres, and the document is available online, but broadly, it has four strands. And I think those strands are interesting for us. It talks about stronger and more effective regulatory and accountability framework for, for buildings. It also talks about clearer standards and guidance and a better understanding for the building sector of what is required to make buildings safe. Most critically, it talks about a stronger voice for residents and that will be at the very heart of the new system. Our experience says that concerns raised by the residents of Grenville were not listened to. And, and the final strand is that it sets out how the government will be working with industry to help them lead the required cultural change to prioritize public safety. December's call for evidence informs a full technical review of building regulations, fire safety guidance, approved document B. The next stage from this document here is that we will move forward and consult on options for that governance structure and oversight of building regulations. We'll set out a work plan to review the building regu regulations and approved document B. And we're also going to establish a standards committee to advise the Secretary of State of progress. In terms of the NFCC, whilst there's all the technical uh, 
adjustments and reviews taking place with regards to building regulations and the approved document B. There's also the job of the National Fire Chiefs Council to look forward and decide what we can do operationally. And there's three main areas that we're looking at. One is around site-specific risk information. And that involves local crews understanding the risks, the challenges, the procedures, evacuation, and engaging with responsible persons from the buildings. In terms of incident planning, as we said, failure of uh, life safety systems is not unprecedented in fire situations. So incident planning is essential. We are talking to crews across the country around operational discretion. We're looking at command and control procedures, at decision making, water supplies, predetermined attendance for high rise buildings. Most importantly, safe systems of work for our crews. And of course, the age old argument of defensive v offensive firefighting. And finally, there's something for me around the understanding the built environment for frontline crews. Um, approximately 15 years ago, uh, frontline crews uh, in the UK really stopped doing technical fire safety and I think we've had a decline in skills and knowledge and awareness. So we're looking how do we boost frontline crews awareness of means of escape? How do we boost frontline crews awareness of smoke control systems, of sprinklers, what compartmentation means, ventilation systems, alarm systems. So we're looking at a program of short audits which will promote those skills at frontline level and help us succession plan so that the whole of the fire and rescue sector has a broad base of fire safety knowledge. So what's our aim? What we're hoping to do is move forward from a system which may ultimately fail to protect members of the public and firefighters from fire. We're seeking an holistic approach for the whole life of building with excellent resident engagement and an accountability framework to maintain standards across the build se sector throughout the life of that building, which is one of the most important points for me. I think Grenville Tower opened the eyes to the world, really, and particularly in the UK. We were some building, it was a building fire that we never expected with a tragic loss of life, and I think it's going to be the trigger for significant change uh, in terms of building safety, where approved inspectors, building control officers, will, and the approved document B will provide that framework working with local fire and rescue services so we can move forward to ensure uh, resident safety and firefighter safety uh, in our buildings across the UK. It's been my pleasure to present to you today, and I thank you once again for the kind invitation. Uh, I hope you found my presentation interesting and I'll be here for the rest of the day if anyone would like to uh, discuss my presentation with me. Thank you.